Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome to the Command 66 Day Challenge 2.0, Day 65. Just a heads up, guys, and I hope you don't mind. I know this was a 66 day challenge originally, and I am pretty sure that we are going to go longer than 66 days, especially as we begin to approach the uh, September 15th deadline. So, uh, just a heads up, you don't have to tune out or unsubscribe after tomorrow. Uh, I am going to continue to post videos on command training and more. So just a heads up there. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit further about DocuSign and its use within the KW Command platform. So we're going to jump into opportunities here on the left hand side, the handshake icon. And we're going to pull up my test opportunity which is down here below right so we have my active buyer this is Donald Duck and currently I am showing him homes per my um, pipeline here and we have found a home that we want to put an offer in on so we're gonna click on Donald's opportunity which we have already created previously and we're gonna go into the document section here at the top so documents section and then I'm going to come over here and traditionally if you've not already been into DocuSign from your opportunity here on the right hand side it may say start a transaction because I've already started one mine now says go to transaction so I'm going to click on go to transaction and this is going to pull me into my DocuSign room now if you've not already signed on it'll ask you to put in your email and then it'll ask you to put in your password and eventually you should get to a page similar to this one now on a previous challenge I talked to you about how important it is to fill out the details section so here on the details tab you want to fill in as much information as possible that you have including the names and emails of all of the people that you have especially your buyer one your buyer two assuming you're the buyer's agent and then your information as well and I can show you why that's important next so we're going to get into the documents tab now and I need to send off a family one to four which is the kind of contract document here in Texas and so there are a variety of ways to add a document to a DocuSign room you can see here the big tab in the middle allows me to upload those documents so if I was with Donald and I had him sign everything and fill it out in a paper and then I scanned it in I could click here to pull that document off of my computer. Additionally, I can click on add in this top right hand corner, the plus sign add button, and I'm going to get several options to where I can find those documents. So from my computer within DocuSign zip form, if I've saved it in the cloud, either my Google Drive, Dropbox or Box, I can do that. Many of us are getting our documents slowly imported into the DocuSign form section. So I can click on DocuSign forms and my MCA is slowly loading those in kind of getting rooms set up and um, uh, template groups built out for us. So I can select the DocuSign form. I'm just going to select all documents. And right now our uh, state association documents are all in here. So I'm going to look for family and I want the one to four family residential contract. So I'm going to click on that checkbox and I'm going to click on add. Now I can't guarantee you all of you are going to have these documents quite yet. We're actually still waiting on our local MLS's association documents, but we do have our state documents. Um, and also some of you may not be using DocuSign. You may be using a different format to get your signatures, um, but this is strictly for if you're using DocuSign. So I'm going to click on add. And it's going to pull that document into my room so you can now see this document is available. If I click on the document, I have the ability here within DocuSign to fill it out and then save it. And you can see when I went into my details section, I put in the information for my buyers and my sellers and that starts to auto populate. I put in some basic information about the property. I could have put in the lot, the block, all of this. I just didn't. Um, but because I put in some basic information, it started to pull that in. Um, I was testing this earlier, so I can actually type in the offer. If I type in the cash portion on this form for me here in Texas, and I type in the finance part, it automatically does the sales price. So that's nice. So I have the ability to go through here and fill out this entire document. I can check the check boxes. I can type in, you know, the amount of earnest money, whatever it may be. Once I get this document completely filled out, I can click on save and close. <clears throat> this is going to save all of the additions that I just made 
into my DocuSign room. So you can see this document has now been updated. And if I want to get it signed, the next thing I would do is I'm going to click on this little circle to the top left-hand corner of the document. Once I do that, you can see I get this toolbar that pops up here. In order to get signatures, I need to click on the pin right here in the middle, which is the DocuSign emblem. When I click on that emblem, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see I get the opportunity to start working on getting signatures. So the first thing I need to do is I can change the envelope name. This is kind of what the subject header is going to be when the email goes over. So I might call this 123 Main Street and that's uh, Donald and Daffy Duck, okay? These are the documents that have already been added. If I wanted to add any additional documents, I could by clicking on Room Documents to pull over documents from my room, or I could use a template or pull them from one of my cloud-based or computer-based uh, files. Next, I want to add recipients, and these are going to be the people that are either going to edit or sign this document. So when I click on Add Recipient, because I entered my buyer's information and my information, I can actually click on pre-tagged roles. And then I can come in and say, okay, I wanna do buyer one, buyer two, and buyer broker. And buyer one, that was Donald. You can see I have his information here, his email, so I can click on that. Buyer two was Daffy, because I put Daffy's email in the details section, it shows up. And then buyer broker, that's going to be me. I can put my information in here as well. Once I click on add selected, you can see it'll slowly start to add them in. Here's buyer one, here's buyer two, here's buyer broker. If I think, well, hey, I want Daffy to get the email first, I can move her up by clicking and dragging her above Donald. Now, the way that DocuSign works is it's gonna send the documents off to Daffy. Donald is not going to get those documents until Daffy can finishes signing. Okay, so Daffy's going to get them, then Donald's going to get them, then I'm going to get them. So I can actually change this order here also by clicking on this and changing that. So I want uh, Daffy to go first and then Donald and then myself. So I can reorder it by clicking in this box as well. Finally, if I want them to do more than sign, I can click on that. If I just want them to view the document, but they don't actually have to sign it, we can do that. Um, I could have somebody receive a copy of it. So for example, if I had an admin that I was working with and I want the admin to receive a copy, I could do that um, as well. I could add my admin as a person on the uh, envelope and then make sure that they've received a copy as well. So next, once I have all of my people in, all of their emails in, they all say they need to sign, I can come down to the message <clears throat> and I can say, please DocuSign this offer for 123 Main Street and then I can type whatever I want in the subject box make sure this looks good call with questions this is everything we spoke about earlier whatever you're gonna put in there right <clears throat> next I can say come up to this top right hand corner and click on the yellow box that says next once I click in next, it's going to send me in to the opportunity to start adding initials and signatures. So I'm gonna click on next. And it's gonna take a second to load. And then you're gonna see I get taken into the add fields icon. Now this document has already been set up and you'll see that buyer one and buyer two are already in here with their initials. So on this top left hand corner, you can see there's a drop down box. Daffy's color is yellow, Donald's color is blue, and you can see it automatically is asking Daffy to initial here and Donald to initial here. Now, if that wasn't auto-populated in your setup, you could drag over initials. Let's just say I'm gonna drag in uh, Daffy's initials here. I can resize that by making it a little bit smaller. Okay, and I can also copy it. So if I click on Control C, the nice thing is I can come down to the next page and hit Control-V, it's gonna drop it in that same exact spot, right? So Control-V, et cetera. Now, if this is not where I wanted Don Daffy to sign, I could click on this initial and hit Delete. I could come back up to this one, click on Delete again, and let's take this last one out as well. So this is, it should be very similar to Dot Loop. Those of you who've used it, you're dragging in your signatures, you're dragging in your initials, date signed, I have the opportunity to add name, email, company, title, 
If I just want a blank checkbox, oops, it looks like I forgot to put in who the title company was, right? I didn't actually fill out this entire document, but you can imagine this happening. I could fill in, drop in that box, and then come over here to add text, and I could put in celebrity title Cypress, right? Um, if I wanted to drop in a checkbox, I could do that and say, oh, uh, let's see, I need to find a checkbox. Let's go down to the next page. Okay, so who's gonna actually pay for the survey? Let me drop this checkbox on buyer to pay for survey. And then I can actually check on checkbox values here on the right hand side. See there's this little checkbox here, this drop down. Then I can click on that and it'll change it to actually being checked. Once I get all the way through this document, I wanna make sure everything looks good. All the uh, T's are crossed, I's are dotted, checkboxes are in the right places, initials are in the right places. I can actually click, click on recipient preview and it's gonna say, okay, what does Daffy see? This is the email that Daffy's gonna get. So I could kind of go through and make sure everything looks good. I could also say, okay, what's Donald gonna see when he gets his? All right, let me go through and preview what his looks like. And I can actually click on start and it'll actually let me, okay, this is where he's gonna initial, this is where he's gonna initial, this is where he's going to initial, etc. Did I miss any pages? And it's just dropping in signature, right? It's not actually putting in his initials. And this won't actually show up on his document. Finally, I can click on my name here on the top left-hand corner to preview what it will look like when I get it. And because I didn't actually have any initials or signatures, I'm just gonna get a copy of it once it's all signed. There's nothing here for me to do. To get out of the preview, I'm gonna come up here to the top right-hand corner and click on X. And then everything looks good. I previewed it. Everybody has their initials where they should be. Everyone has their signatures where they should be. All of the information is filled out and ready to go. I would click on Send. And that's going to send off this document to all of the parties for them to sign it. And you can see here's my envelope. You can see I was testing a lot of this over the last day or two. Here is my envelope and it says 123 Main Street, Donald and Daffy, and it's saying it's waiting for others to sign it. So it's been sent off to Don Daffy. Once Daffy signs it, Donald will get it. Once Donald signs it, I'll get it back. I can sign it. And then this will change to sign. Okay, so these are your envelopes. Think about your envelopes as literally just that. I have sent out documents in an electric envelope. They're being signed and then they're gonna be mailed, quote unquote, back to me. So that's basically how to upload a document or bring one in from DocuSign, depending on you know kind of what your DocuSign status in your market and your market center looks like. How to drop in all the signatures and initials, add the correct people, and then send it off for signatures. Hopefully you guys have found value in this video. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments. And as always, I will look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much.